Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the French Watch Collection channel. So this is my next episode, you can see a beautiful Zenith watch. A Zenith Guilloche uh, with a Guilloche dial, uh, which is a very sp specific finish of dial. So yeah, as you can see the watch is pretty beaten up with like a broken glass, so we'll have to change that. So let's open the watch and see what's inside. So I use a, a ball to turn and unscrew the case back. The case back is pretty damaged. You can see somebody tried to open it before and uh, slide and, and make some scratches on the back. Uh, you can see a protection that I think is uh, anti-magnetic protection. So you can see that on some old watches, we're just to put on the inside on top of the movement just to protect from magnetic field. I'm not sure if it's working very well, but yeah, you can see that on some of the old watch. Wow, look at this movement, like gold color. Very nice looking movement, yeah. Oh, one of the screws is already loose. That's weird. It was not tied properly by the previous watchmaker. So, okay. The movement is not moving, but yeah, it's weird like to have a loose screw like that inside of the movement. Let's push down and let's remove the the crown. There we go. That's coming out easily. Let's remove this screw, the last screw that's uh, holding the movement on the ring, because the other one was already loose. Okay, so now that's out. And let's see how we can take out the movement. Yeah? There is a huge ring around the movement. This is just a ring to, to make sure the movement doesn't move. Basically, it's filling up the gap between the movement and, uh, and the case. So I put back the winding stem. There we go, so that I can change hour and move the move the ends to align them. Make sure I can remove them easily. Let's put a protection on top of it. And I use my uh, Presto tool from Bergen. Yeah, this is my favorite re method to remove the ends. There is also a way to do it. I have other tools to do it, but I find it quite easy. So I carry on with this method. You can see the end came out easily. The dial as well is, is not bad, it's kind of patina, but maybe with a little bit of clean it can look better. Yeah? Try to remove the, this big ring with like a plastic tool, just get under it and just wedge it out. There we go, for me nice, nice and easy. Okay, so now I will try to locate the screws. Here is one as a dial fit screws, so screws that keep the dial in place, like the tiny little feet under the dials. That's the first one, now I'm on the second one, like I unscrew it. Just need to make sure that you unscrew them, screw them back when you when you remove the dial because or else they are very very small and you can lose them very easily. And they are special screws as well, yes, they have a pointy end to make sure you penetrate the dial fit and to keep it in place. So. You cannot put any type of screws uh, to, if you need to replace them. Let's try to remove the dial gently by turning around and pushing with a screw, screwdriver around. There we go. Now I put the movement in the movement holder and we can start disassemble the movement. So first, as always, try to remove the power by gently holding the crown and removing the click to make sure the, the, the main spring can turn freely. And I remove the, the, the balance assembly because yeah, that's the that's way we want to get it out of the way because if we damage it after, it's a very difficult bit to replace and a very fragile bit. Eh? So let's take it out. The movement looks quite clean. It's a uh, yeah, very nice finish, but it looks clean as well. Like you can see, you cannot see like a lot of dirt. The dial, as you as you saw, was was dirty, but the, the movement is quite clean inside. Yeah, no rust. That's always a good sign. So now we have the pallet fork. So we remove the the, the, the pallet cock, which is on the top, which is holding the pallet fork. So, and you can see at the bottom as well, the, the, the just under my tweezers, that's a number from the movement, which is 10650-6. Yeah, this is a 
quite an old movement with a center second, yeah, not a sub second that you can see on, on more older movement. So this is quite a nice movement for the time, yeah, with a, with a second in the center. Yeah? You will see uh, how it's made. I just removed the, with a Presto tool the, the wheels, which is like friction mounted on the pivot uh, of the wheel, which is under the, the plate. You will see this, this wheel as an extended pivot. So we can put a wheel on top, like uh, which is friction fitted. Now I unscrew the train wheel bridge. So the train wheel is the train of wheels that you can see under where you have the escape wheel which is turning when I unscrew, which is a bit weird. This screw is very tight, so just don't want to damage the screw. So I will use another screwdriver, maybe a bigger one, to see if it's coming. Oof, it's tight, yeah. Oh, here you go, it comes, yeah. Yeah, so now let's get the screws out of the way. Yeah, let's take a tweezers and then get them out of the way. And we can see if we remove the, the bridge and we can see the train of wheel underneath. Yeah. You can see the one on the top which has an extended pivot which is coming out out of the jewels, the top jewels, which is like the, the red ruby color. The wheels are coming out, yes, they were attached, so maybe some try the oil. Okay, so I remove the wheels and now I remove the click spring. I just missed, I remove as well as the, the ratchet wheels with the big uh, screw on top of it. So now I remove and this is a, the spring, very small spring. Yeah, I catch it. Yeah, you need to be careful that it doesn't fly. I don't know if you see around the, the, the square bit, I can see that there is some dried up oil or dried up grease. So yeah, I think you really need a maintenance. Okay, now I remove a little tiny screws on the second pinion cock, yeah, which is just holding the second pinion in place. I will try to remove everything in one go. Just need to be careful because you will see the second pinion are very long and very easy to bend, so you need to remove them very gently. You see how long it is? There is a tiny spring holding it in place, friction spring. So I just need to remove, I could have removed the, 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 the spring before, I would have maybe be better, better way to do it. There we go. Now everything is, is disassembled, I will remove the spring later. Now I can focus on the crown wheel. Uh, that's the next step. And you can see there is only one screw in the middle, so that means it's a reverse threaded screw. So you need to turn the other way to unscrew, to like, like if you are going to screw a normal screw. And you need to be really careful because if you do it in the wrong way around, you can shear off the head of the screw. And after it's very difficult to, re to remove the, the broken bit inside. Yeah? So I remove the screw, there is a top bit. There is a wheel, so crown wheel. There is a kind of bush around and a plate at the bottom. That's a lot of parts for a crown wheel. Yeah, you can see other designs which are a lot simpler with like a lot less parts. Yeah, so I removed everything, come easy. Yeah? So now we can carry on and I can remove the barrel bridge with uh, the screws holding it. So uh, let's remove that. There is two screws. They came out very easily, so they're coming out very easily, so that's good. No problem there. I hope you like this kind of video, yes, yeah, uh, my first couple of video, I'm getting better at it, so I have a second camera now as well, because this video I, I did it only with uh, one camera, so there is only one angle which is from the top. Now I have a second angle from the in front of me, like a less uh, macro uh, view, so it, I think the content will be better. So I still have a couple of video with the old setup, and I will get some new video with the new setup soon. Uh, I hope you can notice the difference. I think the, the video will be easier to watch, and you will see my less my hand, my head. Uh, so I think that will be a, a better experience for you as well. So I carry on with the disassembly. I cannot remove the center wheel because I, st I kept the pinion on the other side. So 
I cannot remove it. I remove the barrel assembly. And this, this is a R bit. So that's a bit that you push to make sure the stem is coming out. So let's move on on the other side. So uh, we have the, the assembly on the other side to, to remove. So, okay, let's remove first this spring, which is holding the setting lever in place. That's the setting lever. It's what makes the the stem uh, keeping inside the watch. Let's remove the plate on the top to expose all the parts underneath and to, to remove all the parts from the keyless work. It's two little tiny screws. And let's remove the assembly. Yeah, it's a bit tight. Be careful not to break anything. I don't want to use too much force uh, because it's like very small parts. You can see stuff are staying attached. So yeah, and you can see everything underneath with the yoke, the spring, uh, and all the rest of the assembly. You see I use a bit of Rodico that I put on a spring and I will use a tweezer to, to take it out, like a big tweezer, a strong tweezer. And there we go. If it fly, it just stay attached to the Rodico, basically. So that's a safe way to remove the spring because this little spring have tendency to fly very far, and to find them is very hard. Okay, remove all the, all the last parts. We are coming nicely along, and I need to remove the cannon pinion. Same, I use a, a, a version tool to remove the cannon pinion. It's friction mounted, so it's quite uh, hard to remove. And if you use a tweezers, it's very easy to damage the the parts. So you just want to use the right tool for the job, yeah? Okay, so last couple of parts, like minute wheel, driving wheel. The setting wheel and the clutch are the last two bits. Okay, you can see they are still attached, so it's probably some dry grease in it. Uh, so yeah, with a good clean. When I cleaned the part, uh, I, I was using an ultrasonic machine because I did not have a watchmaker cleaning machine at the time. So it's actually a good way to watch uh, to, to wash sorry, the parts. Uh, but I much prefer to do it right now with uh, uh, old, I have an old watch, clean, watch cleaning machine, which is really good. I will do a special video on that. Maybe I will show you on uh, on, on other uh, videos when I wash the parts. Just put back the balance assembly on the main plate. So the same when I put it in a, in a machine, in a cleaning machine, to make sure the balance assembly doesn't get thrown away and get damaged during the cleaning process. I put the screw back, I tie it, and after I put all the parts in a basket, in like little tiny little baskets, uh, to be to be to be washed in uh, in an ultrasonic machine. Just one in back to make sure that uh, just work it around. Yeah, it works. Okay, now main spring barrel. Just I remove the top lid to expose the main spring inside. very gently because the main spring can jump. It happened to me a couple of times. It will fly across the room. The barrel arbor is stuck. Ah, the barrel arbor is stuck to the... So yeah, there you go. Now it comes. Again, you can see some maybe old grease in it. And you can see the main spring is very old. Uh, it's not like... A, you see the color of the main spring? Very dark. Like all the new mainspring now they come, they have like a steel color. And this one is very dark, so this is a very old style of mainspring, uh, which are not used since uh, a long time, I guess. The new spring are more efficient than this type of spring. And you will see, like, I don't know if you will see, like, on a video, but the mainspring is like full circle. It's, it doesn't have the shape of the new main, only new type of mainspring, so. Yeah, you can see it's, it's, it's all around, it goes all around, like a snail. 
Okay, so now I disassemble the, the everything, ah, and you can see it was a bit broken at the back. So I put a new mainspring, you see the difference in color? I put a new mainspring because it was broken, you could, you could see it. After, I, before I cleaned the, the parts, so you see. So I put a barrel bore, a bit of uh, 9104 on the top, and I put the top of the barrel. There we go, now it's in place, almost in place. There it is. Again, put a bit of 9104 where we're gonna put the barrel, just to make sure it's nicely lubricated. It can, can turn freely and nicely. You can see the barrel as well, it's very scratched on the top, so uh, somebody damaged it during a previous, a previous service, so I don't know, it's very weird to have like so much scratches on the top. So now I'm assembling the train of wheels, put the center wheels, already put the third wheel in place. So I just need to measure, so the center wheel is easy, it goes like it's a big hole. Uh, the other one is like, it goes on, on a juice, like on a, on a juice, it's like tiny holes. Uh, I put a, again 9104 where I'm gonna put the parts that push, again the setting lever to make sure it can push freely. And now I put the bar bridge. Go, go nicely in place, just to make sure it's located properly on all the parts. And here we go right down, all the way down. Just need to make sure that you don't use some force because it's very easy to bend, uh, to bend the parts because they are so tiny and uh, on this type of watch, after it can be very expensive or very difficult to find a, a replacement a replacement part here. Yeah. Okay, so everything was in place. can put the screw back. I really like the color of this movement. Like, you can see Omega as well as very specific colors in the movement, but it's, it's nicer to work on the movement, like doesn't look like steel, like like the other movement. It doesn't have a very nice finish, like uh, it's, it's very industrial, um, but the color make it looks very nice. And what I like about Zenith, I mean, when you when you work on different watch, you can see the, the movement are, let's say, simple. I mean, they are not like very complicated, but you can see they are very robust. Yeah, they have good quality. Uh, because you, you can see even a watch which are very dirty or very in bad shape is running pretty well and or sometimes they're not working you just give them a good clean and, and they go they go again very well so they have very very good movement uh, very solid movement um, from this era I think movement from the 60s 50s 70s um, yeah it's, it's, I like to work on Zenith yeah. So okay, now I put the, the click spring assembly and I'm putting now the crown wheel with the big screw in the middle. Okay, just try to tie it down. So I will just hold the wheel while I tie, tie down the screw. There we go. Everything is nicely in place. And now I reassemble uh, the crown wheel with all the little parts that we saw. You will see maybe in other watches that I will make, like the this mechanism is a bit more complicated than other watches, yeah. Put a bit of 9104 to make sure it's lubricated properly. Okay, let's put kind of the top and the screw at the end. Remember, this one is counterclockwise, so when you put it in, it's, you have less risk. It's just not going to screw it down like, you know, just if you screw it the wrong way around. So you have less risk than uh, when, it's, when you need to untie it. If you go the wrong way, it will break. So just remember, okay, just a little check. Everything looks like it's engaged properly. So now I can carry on a train of wheels. So let's start by the last one, the escape wheel. There we go. You can see that, up. Oh, it went in uh, in the jewel on the... 
and now I can go with the fourth wheel try to locate it it's very 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 tiny you need to go very slowly because if you go too 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 strong you can move the other wheel and you will have to restart everything and now I put the train wheel bridge on top of it so I need to make sure we align the bottom pivot in the holes now we need to do the top pivot in the hole of this bridge There you go. And you see when they are all aligned, you turn and everything is moving. You turn the, the, the barrel and everything is moving. So when that's done, you need to make sure you put the screws and to make sure you keep everything in place. Okay, let's put the first screw. Okay, that's in. Let's grab the second one. So as well, you need to be careful when you do a watch like because you can see, as you can see, there is a lot of little screws. They are, some are the same, some are different. So you just need to make sure you don't mix them. At the beginning, it's a bit difficult because you don't know where the part goes. So there is some technique, maybe I will go, uh, we make a video about it. But after a time, you, you remember like where the screws are and where the screws go. Okay, so let's move to the other side, but first I will really like if you subscribe to my channel, like the video, uh, because this will help me to make some more videos and to keep me motivating because this takes a lot of time and I hope you enjoy the video as much as I do. Uh, but yes, yeah, thanks if you can subscribe and help my channel. So okay, after putting a bit of uh, grease, I assemble the, the clutch and uh, now I'm going to put the, the stem, so put a bit of grease on a stem first before we introduce it between the clutch and the sitting wheel okay now we're going to put the setting lever Here we go on this on this part. I much prefer the the setting lever, which is like uh, like mounted on a on a spring rather than the one that you need to screw from the other side. I, I really don't like the setting lever with the screw on the other side. It's very annoying to pull in. Like I'm, I prefer to put this type of assembly. Uh, yeah, let's put the grease in the clutch in between where you will have the yoke sitting in, there we go, you can see now setting lever working when I when I pull the stem. Okay, the next step is to put the yoke spring. Yeah. This is a, a strong spring, so hold it in place with a plastic bit and gently push it with a tweezers. Just make sure it sit flat. There we go, it's in place. Now the yoke is under tension. So when you pull the when you pull the the crown, that's why it gives you the tension in a crown. Yeah? Put a bit of grease between all the mechanical parts which are in contact. So use grease instead of oil because the grease is more for like the parts which are in contact in friction, the oil is more for the parts which are turning on the juice. Uh, or something which is uh, without too much force. This part have a lot of force in between them uh, because of the sp of the spring. So this now I I use some oil before I put the parts. Put a cannon pinion. Just click in nice in place. This is friction mounted, so we need to click. I oil this uh, this jewel before putting the minute wheel or else after I cannot oil it. I, I do the oil of the other jewels but I prefer to do it under a microscope because this is quite a precise job yeah to, to oil the, the jewels. Uh, I will do maybe a video about it as well. Yeah. So let's put the last parts with the little screws like two screws to hold it in place. Uh, 
that's the last one. Oh, the movement is moving, just to make sure. Okay, and now I pull the arm, okay, against the setting lever. This, that's what we need the nice, uh, the, the position when you pull the stem. Yeah? Okay, I remove the excess grease, just to make sure it's clean, not too much, not too much grease. And on top of it, I put this arm that will act as a spring on top of the setting lever. Yeah? Just to make sure it stay in place. And when you push on the other side, uh, that's that's what when you want to remove the stem. Yeah? Let's put these screws. Okay, now put it in place. Now it's in place like a kind of little fork come around this pin. Movement doesn't want to stay in place, I need to hold it. There we go. Keep it in place, and now if I pull, you can see, yeah, it moved, it turned. Okay, so let's move to the other side, and we are going to assemble the, the art of the watch. So first we put the pallet fork in the jewel, yeah, it's in place. Pallet fork as well, so this is the last, uh, this is the last part. And this part, the jewels, compared to the other jewels, don't need to be oil, even if you can see some uh, Japanese watch, I think it's Psycho, which is putting oil, like the Swiss uh, watch, they never put oil in the jewel uh, from, for the pallet fork. Uh, but one thing is, which is quite tricky to do at the beginning, you need to oil the jewel as well, uh, of, the, of the pallet forks, like the stones which are at the extremity of the pallet fork. Uh, and I need to do this under a microscope, so I will show you on one of the video. Uh, you need to, to put a specific grease, uh, but yeah, um, or oil, depending depending on uh, on the beats of the watch, if it's a high beating watch or a low beating watch. Um, but yeah, this is quite tricky to do at the beginning. Okay, let's put the screws on the pallet for cock, yeah, to make sure it stays in place nicely. Okay, that's tiny screws. So far the assembly is going pretty well on this part. So yeah, the part where nothing was damaged, the, the conditions were good, like not too dirty, even if you saw that maybe it was some dried up oil in some of the jewels, but uh, actually this, this movement is very nice, very nice looking for the age. Yeah? Except on the barrel that you saw, it was some scratches on the barrel, but the rest is uh, pretty good condition. Okay, let's put the last screw. And now we can check. Let's put a bit of a wine. That's a lot of a wine, actually. I wine it fully. Okay, and previously I put the entire balance assembly in uh, in a solution uh, to make sure it's, uh, it's clean. So now I put it on an absorbing paper and I hydrate. Okay, after dry, I just put it in place and see if the watch is starting. It's beautiful. I, I like this balance wheel. There we go. You see just a little move and it went straight away. Very, very good movement. Like this. I told you, the scenic movement is uh, very reliable and very solid. I find it amazing, like to work on. I mean, this watch is not very old, but like I have some watch from the 20s, the 30s, still working, still beating. Like just need a bit of maintenance once, once in a while. Like you can see now. So now I'm removing the top jewels. Uh, to, to oil them, clean them first and oil them. I, so this is, oh, here it is. So this is one part and the other part, I don't know, it jumped somewhere, it is. So I will put that in a solution to make sure we remove the grease and um, the oil, because we put oil on this one, um, get removed. Put them on a paper to absorb the oil. S same way as uh, the balance that we did before, we dry them with a bit of, uh, with air. We clean them if we see there is still some uh, some uh, some residue of oil on it. We clean them with a bit of radical, both parts, 
so the, the top and bottom here it is like you can see with 4d code okay one well, tiny bit okay and after we will grease and we put like a drop of oil so we use a 9010 90 oil in the middle you need to be very precise you need to be a very specific size as well not too small not too big in the middle here we go now the, the, the drop is in and we need to put the other part on top of it there you go and now it's fully done and we can put it back in the balance assembly just need to make sure the spring on the top is open there we go let's put it in on the pivot yes now it's in place and we put back the spring let's keep it all in place so this bit has act as a spring for to protect the balance staff uh, which is a very fragile uh, bit of the watch and before when there was falling on the ground the ballast staff was broken and need to be changed quite often with this uh, shock, shock absorbing jewels just to make sure that uh, the, the balance staff doesn't break here so here we are putting the friction mounted wheel that we removed earlier so you see i put it on this extended pivot and with a tool i press it uh, to make sure it's friction mounted you can see it's turning very slowly so it's driven by the wheel uh, which is on the other side so now i put in the middle i put the second pinion now i put the second pinion cock on top of it with the spring and i put the tiny screw to make sure everything stay in place properly here we go so now we are done with the movement we can put the dial I so you see the dial i did a, a light clean of the dial it looks much cleaner so there is some patina to it but it looks much cleaner less orange yellow than it was before which is a very beautiful dial with this gyoshi in the middle and i screw the dial back in place okay so now i put it back again in the movement holder and i will put the end back in place so there is no date complication so the hour end doesn't really matter uh, where you put it you just put it in a random place after when you put the minute end you just need to make sure that's aligned so that's why I'm, what i'm going to do now I put it to midnight and now i'm going to put the minute end perfectly aligned to make sure it's aligned between the hours and the minute okay now i push it in place there we go just turn to make sure nothing is touching I check at three o'clock it looks good at six it looks good so yeah it's fine the ends are in place properly and at midnight it looks perfect and last hand it's the second hand just put it in place you can see it's already driven and now i just need to push it to make sure it stay in place there we go the minute end is not touching the second hand so everything looks good the case, I just uh, did uh, ultrasonic cleaning for the case as well. It looks better, but you can see the gold plated got faded on the, on the edges. Uh, and right now, I don't have the equipment to do gold plating. Maybe it would be a nice watch to redo the gold plating. Uh, but for now, I, I, I leave it as this here. So, okay, I put uh, the dial back, put the screw, put the stem, sorry, in place, put the ring around, and I put the screws which are holding the movement on the ring. That's the first one, you remember that was fully loose when I opened the watch. That's like tight quite good, so make sure like it doesn't untie, like we, we found the, the screws when we open the watch. And let's put the second one. I really like this movement, like I found it really beautiful. Now I take a quick measurement because you remember the glass was broken, so I need to find a replacement. Okay. You can see around 31, 31.1. 30.2, sorry. Okay, let's put let's finish with the back. Actually I put the glass back, but I put it on my press tool that I have in another room, so I did not film it. I will show you in another video. 
And here is the finished product. So now the watch is finished, let's put it on a time grapher to see which kind of result we are getting. As you can see, the amplitude is very high at 319 degrees, but it means the watch is running well. Uh, it's gaining plus 4 and plus 2 seconds per day, so that's quite good. And it's just a bit error, which I don't know how to adjust on this type of watch, but that's something to learn for the next time. If you like the video, please subscribe. Look at my other video on Zenith watches. I have a nice one on the Zenith Orodite. And follow me on my other social media, on Patreon and Instagram for some updates. Yeah. So let's see the finished product. Bye bye.